my name is Shanelle O'Brien and I'm from TTHCI and what I'm going to be doing today is a curried sardine pinwheel bread. So the first step, I'm going to have to pour the flour into the bowl. You're going to have to use 8 ounces of flour or about a cup of flour. You're going to put in a tablespoon of sugar, a teaspoon and a half of yeast, a teaspoon of honey. Uh, what the honey does, the sugar actually helps the yeast develop more and a lot quicker. Uh, this is powdered milk. Any kind of powdered milk you could use is also a teaspoon and a half. And I'm going to add in some cooking. This is about a tablespoon of cooking. Alright, so what we have to do now, we have to knead the dough. So we're taking it from an outward motion and bringing it in. And really trying to fold in all the ingredients. Now you could do this also with the KitchenAid mixer with the dough hook. But I prefer to use my hands because you could really get a feel for your dough because you want it to be soft. So as you can see, I have to break up the cooking. The cooking is at room temperature. And what I have to do now is just add in a little bit of water. I have about 5.5 ounces of water here. And I'm going to just add a little bit. Because this recipe actually adds for a lot more water than you need. So you just add as you go and adjust to suit. Now that you've finished kneading, it should look about like this. Um, just fold in the edges and make sure that it is uniform. And we're going to put this to rest. Okay, so while the bread is resting, or the dough is resting, I should say, we're going to start to curry the sardines. So what we're using is the Brunswick um, sardines and soya oil. And what we're going to do is just going to open up the tin. Right, and what we're using, we're going to actually use the oil from the sardines itself to saute up the sardines because it already has all the sardine flavor and so on. So I just put it in the fryer pan. So I'm going to put the sardines in the pan and just kind of let it rest there for a little bit and I'm going to cut up the rest of the ingredients for it. So what I have is one pimento, a half of an onion, half of an onion, a little piece of side, you don't want that to overpower the sardines so much and then about two cloves of garlic. What I'm going to use to curry it, of course, is curry powder and then I'm using saffron. Saffron is one of the most expensive spices you'll find in the world and what I'm going to use it for is mainly for color. The flavor you'll definitely get that from the curry powder but the saffron will give it that nice bright yellow complexion. Okay, and the seasoning and everything is ready. So now you have the chopped up side the chopped up garlic, pimento and onions. We set aside about a tablespoon or so of curry powder and about the same in the saffron and you could adjust it to suit. It depends on how strong you want the curry flavor or not. And then the yellow color really comes out in the bread. So I would suggest that you put a little bit more saffron so that it really pops. Let's go to the stove. So we have everything here. I'm just gonna put the fire on a very high heat first so that I can get the um, oil to heat up and then I'm going to put in like the curry powder and the saffron powder just so that it could release all the flavors and then I will add the vegetables so it could saute and release the, all those flavors from that as well and then I'll put in the sardines into the party. What I like about this is that it's so flavorful, it has a lot of flavors playing with it. You have the, you have the curry powder, it's a very very local dish. I suppose you could use it for breakfast as a one shot so you already have your sardine in your bread if you go ahead and just put butter and you're ready to go so see it's bubbling there it's hot it's ready so I'm gonna put in some of the curry powder that's about a, it looks like about a teaspoon of curry powder and you see I'm a little bit heavier with the saffron because I really want that yellow color that you see in there a little bit more The reason why I want it to be dry as well is because in the bread it already has a lot of liquid so if you add any additional liquid it will end up being dense and 
it wouldn't have that same bread texture that you're looking for. This is sufficiently heated, so I'm just going to take it off because I don't want it to burn and then continue to mash it and make it into a nice looking paste. Alright, and we're done. What you have to do now is just leave it, let it cool, and we could go back to the bread. Okay, so now that we have finished cooking the curry sardines, what we have to do now is just get one of your baking trays, put foil on it, and just pinch it forward to make little rows. It'll make it easier for you to clean up the bread and so on when you finish. And now the bread should have doubled in size, so we're just gonna get that. You should see it's about double in size now, and it's soft, so when I cook it, it comes back up really quickly, and that's something that you're looking for as one of the good quality. Because what we're gonna do is mold the bread now and put the sardines in it. Okay, so what we have to do now, after you finish doing all your loaves, you just have to line them up in the sheets and then put it to rest again because we've been playing up with the dough too much and it, it just needs to chill, needs to relax. So that's going to take about 15 to 20 minutes and then you'll be able to put an egg wash. That will give it a nice finish and then put it in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, uh, like I said, you need to put an egg wash on the bread. Um, basically what an egg wash is, you just take one egg at the most crack it and whisk it just like if you're gonna do like a scrambled egg or something put it in your bowl and then utilize a pastry brush or uh, not a paint brush it looks like a paint brush but it's not a paint brush it's a pastry brush used for just brushing the egg on top of the bread or just gives it a really nice sheen and really locks in all that like it makes it soft the substitute for this you could use butter or you could use milk and if you wanted it to actually get a hard crust on top and still be soft on inside you could use some water and brush it but not too much because you don't want it to be too moist so that's basically what an egg wash is you saw that soil where if we had put more sardine you would have gotten more of it inside um, and basically that's it, that's the pinwheel bread. 